Welcome to another session and webinar from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. My name is Aaron Cohen. I would like to again thank you for joining us. Our guest this evening is Dr. Henry Wu from um, Stony Brook uh, University Medical Center. He's a professor of neurological surgery and the CEO of Vascular Simulations. He has a very exciting talk about vascular replication, which is a new paradigm for endovascular training. I would like to thank uh, Henry for joining us, and we're very excited to hear about his cutting edge uh, expert uh, uh, work. Thank you, Henry. Please go ahead. Thanks, Aaron, and uh, thanks, Christine, for the invitation to uh, participate in this webinar. Uh, I'm going to talk about what I call vascular replication, what I think is really a new way to train physicians in endovascular devices. So, on our way, uh, I'm currently the CEO of this company, Vascular Simulations, in addition to being a professor of neurological surgery and radiology at Stony Brook, so I do perform both open and endovascular procedures. This is actually one of the first generation prototypes of our device, and it's a silicon replica of the arterial anatomy from the left atrium and the ventricle, and it includes the aorta, the femoral ports, as well as the head. This is uh, the reason why, and the premise for this invention is because nobody really comes out of the operating room or, or comes out of neurosurgical residency, walks into an operating room and can perform world-class neurosurgery. Uh, even after seven years, it takes a significant amount of expertise and time and the development of clinical experience in order to treat patients, especially with life-threatening diseases like aneurysms well. And there's a saying that we have in medicine that good judgment comes from experience and experience comes from bad clinical judgment. And along the way, in order to gain that gl good clinical experience, in traditional medicine, the collateral damage that unfortunately occurs is the cost of human life or the quality of human life. Nowadays, we've got the 80-hour work rule for residents that's mandated by the ACGME. When Aaron and I were training, probably this 80-hour work rule was really not in effect. I mean, frequently, I think we were working way over 80 hours. And it's really difficult to get residents the appropriate training nowadays, especially for these more complex procedures like aneurysm treatment. In addition, uh, endovascular procedures are becoming more prevalent for not just intracranial work, but also for Vascular, peripheral vascular work and for percutaneous valves for the heart, et cetera, et cetera. And new metrics are being developed every single day that drives the healthcare system and will also drive payment uh, from CMS as well as insurance companies in the future. And so neurosurgery, especially vascular neurosurgery and these endovascular procedures is a great way of uh, utilizing what's called the concept of concentrated practice because we get immediate feedback on what our results are, uh, radiographic feedback as well as clinical uh, feedback. And traditionally, the old paradigm of medicine used to be see one, do one, teach one. But that paradigm is definitely obsolete and is really no longer applicable anymore. Neither the federal government nor the patients will accept this as, a, as an approach for training in the future. And there's this 10,000 hour work rule that's been sort of um, uh, disseminated by Malcolm Gladwell from some early social science studies where it really takes that amount of time in order to achieve what's what's called a state of mastery and if you're limited to 80 hours a week if you just do surgical procedures for that entire time it's going to take you over two years in order to reach those 10,000 hours so that is the genesis of this device and there are certainly other pulsatile pump systems that have been developed in the past, but ours is the only system that actually has a pneumatic atrium as well as a ventricle. And so this is a waveform that we obtain when we put a sheet into the arterial system. Uh, there's the systolic uptake and the systolic peak. And then because of the rebound of the aorta, there's also this dichrotic notch. And so our pressure waveforms in our system is identical to the pressure waveforms in a patient. And if you put, the, if you put a, um, a sheath into the arterial anatomy of our device, it is identical to that of a patient. And our system is the only one that can replicate what's called the Winkessel effect. In addition to being 